welcome to episode three of Warhammer 40,000 Imperium, your video guide to your Imperium subscription. I'm Peachy. And I'm Louise. And we're here to guide you through the third issue of your magazine. In this video, we're going to show you how to build your new Assault Intercessors, as well as how to get started with painting your Space Marines, including the Primaris Lieutenant you got with issue one. We'll also be putting the Assault Intercessors through their paces in a new gaming mission. But first, let's take a look at all of the new lore you'll discover about the galaxy in issue three. There's plenty of it. My Necrons get some attention with an in-depth look at Tomb Worlds, where the robotic hordes have rested for 60 million years. There's also a look at the Dark Imperium, the era in which the game is set. Humanity's galactic domain is split in two by a terrible warp storm, and you'll find out about what lies on both sides of this dread tear in reality. You'll also get a profile for your new Assault Intercessors and their war gear and weapons. You'll be able to give your new unit some character with a battle record that allow you to name them and ensure their deeds on the battlefield become legends in the annals of their chapter. Finally, this issue includes the first short story of the Imperium collection, telling the tale of the assault on Drakthir, where the warriors of the Ultramarines battled the Necrons on a world scoured of all human life. Well, that sounds chilling. Maybe we should turn something more cheerful like building your new models. Great idea. I can't wait to get my Assault Intercessors into battle against your Necrons. But first, I'll need to build and paint them. Each of your new models is made up of multiple components supplied on a plastic frame. The parts numbered 1 to 6 form the first model. You'll build a second Assault Intercessor from parts 7 to 12, and the third is made up of parts 13 to 18. Don't forget to keep the bases handy as well. You'll build your Assault Intercessors the same way as the other models you've assembled so far. Start by taking your clippers, remembering to hold them down safely and snipping parts one to six off the sprue, carefully clipping close to the component with the flat side of the blade closest to the piece you're removing. For the first model, start by grabbing components one, two, and three, the head and both the body parts. Hold the head in place and push both parts of the body together. All that's left is to push on the left arm, left leg, and backpack, and then put the model on the base. Easy. Assemble the other two intercessors in the same way as the first. The assault intercessors are really dynamic models, so it may not be immediately obvious where each part goes. Remember to consult the assemble guide in your magazine if you have any questions. Now that they're built, it's time to get some paint on them. Your space marines are gonna take their first steps towards bearing the colors of the noble ultramarines. In the last video, you had a go at painting your first Warhammer 40,000 models. As a reminder though, let's quickly go over the basics again. First up, you'll need your new paint, so grab your McCrag Blue from issue 3 and your paintbrush. You won't need your Rune Lord Brass for the Space Marines. You'll also need some fresh water to thin your paints and keep your brush clean, some paper towels and something to use as a palette. You should have all this from last time we painted, so gather it all up and get ready to paint. We're gonna get all of the Space Marine models base coated the same way you did for your Necrons last time. You have four models to do, your three Assault Intercessors and your Primaris Lieutenant. Give your McCrag Blue a good shake, really get stuck in. Remember, we do this to make sure the paint is thoroughly mixed and ready to use. When you're done, carefully open the pot and click the lid back to ensure that it stays open. Get your brush if you need a reminder on how to hold it. There's a picture in issue two and also get some paint onto the bristles and transfer it onto your palette. Thin it slightly with a drop of water and then wipe away the excess from your brush on the paper towel you have handy. If you're not sure you have the right amount of paint on your brush, refer to the image in issue three of the magazine. You're looking for about this much. Now let's get painting. Start by applying a thin coat of McCrag Blue to an Assault Intercessor. You're looking to cover all of the armor. That's basically everything except his bolt pistol, chainsword, and the pistol holder on his belt. Just as with your Necrons last issue, you want to apply several thin coats to fully cover the plastic. So apply one coat to each model, then go back to the first. It should be dry by this point. For the Primaris Lieutenant, you want to paint the armor again. This model has a lot more detail than the Intercessor, so check your magazine to see which parts to leave without a base coat for now. All these sections will be painted in a future issue. Now that your Space Marines are looking suitably heroic, it's time to test their metal on the battlefield. Let's play.
In your previous battles, a Primaris Lieutenant has faced off against a Necron Royal Warden and warriors who have been working to wake up more of their forces. This time you'll see what's happening elsewhere in the Necron Repair Facility. A squad of Assault Intercessors are cut off from their allies and commanders and are facing a horde of Necron Warriors. The Space Marines have planted locator beacons to bring their Battle Brothers to their aid. Now they have to defend it as the Necrons attempt to destroy it. Out of ammo for their bolt pistols, the Space Marines will need to close in and destroy the Necrons with their brutal Astartes chainsaws. For this game, you will need three Assault Intercessors and three Necron Warriors from Issue 2. Lay out your battle mat, dice, range ruler and wound markers as usual, then set up the models as shown in the pictures in the magazine. You'll also want to grab Objective Marker 1 and place it on the battle mat as shown. This is the locator beacon the Necrons want to destroy. The Space Marines must defend it at all costs. This issue's game will introduce close combat to your battles. Lots of units in the 41st millennium are armed with deadly melee weapons, from the Assault Intercessor's chain swords to vicious claws, sharp knives, or powered weapons that can cut through armor as easily as flesh. Attacking with a close combat weapon works the same way as shooting, except models have to be in base contact to do so, and it uses a different characteristic from the model's data sheet to see if it hits. I guess I'll need to get my Space Marines up close and personal then. You will, but I get the first turn this time, so not until after the Necrons have moved and shot, I'll move each of my Necron Warriors forward, one of them the full five inches, the other two just two inches each. No advancing this time? Not this turn. I need to get to that objective marker, but I'd like to try and kill some Space Marines first, otherwise my Necrons will be taking chainsaws to the face. Well, now that you've moved them, I guess it's time for me to brace myself for some shooting. Yep, I'll start with this one and shoot this Space Marine. You get two dice for each Necron Warrior, is that correct? That is correct. I need threes or better to hit as well. I hope I get lucky. Looking at their data sheet, the Assault Intercessors have a save of a three plus, so I need threes or betters to save. <laughs> is that a dead Space Marine then? Well, Peachy, let me check the data sheet. Phew, Assault Intercessors can take two wounds each so he survives. I'll use a wound marker to show that he is injured. Let's see if my next warrior can finish the job. Fingers crossed and let's roll. Oh, I'm sure I can save that. Those Space Marines are hard to kill. Maybe my third warrior can do it. Well, this all seems eerily familiar. Ugh, fingers crossed. Yes, that's one Assault Intercessor down. Focusing multiple models attacks on a single target is powerful. Could be three wins in a row for me. Not a chance. My Space Marines get to move now and they want revenge for their fallen brother. I'll start by moving the remaining two forward. Their move is six inches. They can't shoot because their pistols are out of ammo. What's next? Well, next we get to see if they can charge. To do that, they have to be within 12 inches of the enemy they want to attack, which they both are. Does that mean they get to attack me then? Not yet, Peachy. Like advancing, you roll to see how far a model can charge. You roll two dice and add them together. If the result gets you within one inch of the enemy model, that is known as engagement range. The charge is successful and they can fight in close combat. They've both made it. That's a bit scary. Well, it should be. Assault intercessors are eight feet tall and armed with chain swords. They're going to chop your necrons into chunks of metal. Put your dice where your mouth is. For close combat, you get a number of attacks based on the attacks characteristics on the model's data sheet. What is it for Space Marines? It is a two, so that's two dice sneezing, threes or betters to hit. That's nasty. I need to make two saves and my Necron Warriors have only one wound each. So if I fail either roll, it's dead. One Necron down, brilliant. Let's see if my second intercessor can do the same. I have a bad feeling about this. I knew it! OK, I'm down to one warrior left. He needs to make it to objective or his chainsword bait. I'm going to have to advance him. No! How the game goes from here is in your hands. Follow the steps in your magazine and see who wins. Remember that you can play again to see if trying different tactics will get you different results. But first, let's take a quick look at what you can expect in the upcoming video. Next time we'll be taking you through issue 4 where you'll get a new unit for the Necrons, the massive Scorpec Destroyers. You'll be building those and painting them with both Rune or Brass and a new paint, Lead Belcher. You'll also use this new colour on the rest of your Necrons and Space Marines. There will also be loads of exciting things to discover about the Warhammer 40,000 universe, including how Space Marines are created and the dangers of the warp. 
If you're not subscribed to Warhammer 40,000 Imperium yet, remember that you can do so on the website. In addition to getting four issues delivered each month, you'll get free gifts that will help you build and paint your models. We'll see you next time, and until then, enjoy your games. Bye. Ascent.